We have been talking about love the past two weeks and we have learned so much. Now, if I ask you, are you a loving person? What will be your answer? In a survey, when people are asked this question, almost all the participants would answer, yes, I'm a loving person. But do we really know what it means to love? What does love look like when we apply it in our daily lives? This is what we're going to learn today. The title of our message today is Acts of Love Because You Love Me. The main text for today is 1 Corinthians 13 verses 4 to 7. In these verses, Paul is describing what love should look like, what it is, and what it's not. We often hear and use this verse during weddings. But Paul is actually addressing believers in the church who were causing division. So I think more than just a reminder to married couples, this is a reminder for us that as followers of Christ, we should exhibit these characteristics. Himay-himayin natin, ano-ano nga ba itong distinguishing acts of love? When we say distinguishing acts, it is something that sets a person apart from the others. For example, this action distinguishes a certain group of people. Can you guess kung sino ang may ganitong distinguishing acts? Yes, Japanese are known for showing courtesy through bowing and removing their slippers whenever they enter houses. So distinguishing acts of genuine love when these are present, we are sure that people around us would know and feel that we are His disciples as we love the people around us sincerely. So the seven distinguishing acts of genuine love is patience, graciousness, humility, courtesy, practicing restraint, joyful, and consistent. Let us start. The number one distinguishing act of love is patience. Grow in patience and it will be the evidence that you are growing in love. They say that when we grow in patience, we are also growing in love. What is patience? Patience means long suffering. It is the capacity to put up with difficult people and desperate situations. Will you still love a person if you don't get your way with them? If they don't do what you want them to do? If they fail to measure up to your expectations? I have two grandchildren, age 4 and 2. Age ng super kulit and gulo. They don't always listen and obey me immediately. But, you know what? I'm not irritated. But how come? When my husband does something like not putting his dirty clothes in the hamper, I get irritated and get mad at him right away. The point is, usually, with the people around us, especially those closest to us, it is not enough just to say, Alam mo namang mahal kita, di ba? We have to show them that we love them, especially by being patient with their misgivings. The second distinguishing act of love is graciousness. It has two aspects, being kind to others and not being envious of others. If you want to grow in love, focus on how to bring pleasure to those people who God has placed around you. Being kind means focusing on other people, their welfare, how we can help them, and going beyond what is expected, even if the person does not deserve it. But being gracious also means being willing to let other people shine more than you. We need to see people as more important than us. We need to refuse entitlement mentality. Love does not envy. Love is gracious not only in what it can give to and does for others. It is also gracious in regard to what others are doing. Henry Dramon says, when you attempt to do something, you will always encounter other men who will do it better. More often than not, we say we love the people we work with. But when someone is appreciated and you are not, how do you feel? We say we love our friends, 
But how do we feel when we see they have nicer things and bigger houses? If you grow in love, you will be free of envy. You will be able to cultivate a gracious spirit and you will be blessed. One of the first persons that I shared the gospel with is my best friend. She was indifferent at first, but God's word opened her cold heart. I invited her to a couple's retreat. She submitted to God and won her husband. Ed and I ministered to them, and we saw the transforming power of God in their family. Her husband was promoted, and the whole family was relocated. When she invited us to visit them, my jaw dropped. She lives in an exclusive subdivision, have helpers, even have a driver, and her own security guard, and a beautiful home. Nainggit ako. Nagreklamo ko kay God. Sabi ko, bakit ganun? Sinaran ko lang naman siya, di ba? Di ba dapat mas blessed yung nagsashare? Ako yon. I told my friend about this. We laughed about it. And she told me, I'm going to pray for you, my friend. Number three. Humility. Love does not boast. It is not proud. It is not self-seeking. Humility is thinking the best of others and less of you. Alan Redpath said, When a man begins to boast, he is advertising his emptiness and ignorance. One of the greatest examples of humility is Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ never showed off. His greatness was revealed not merely in what he displayed, but in the things he suppressed. Wow! Love is not self-seeking. Jonathan Edwards says, A person of selfish spirit exaggerates his afflictions as if his sufferings were greater than those of anybody else. It simply means you are too focused on yourself and what you want. One of our greatest fears nowadays is to be afflicted with the COVID-19 virus. I know of a couple who were facilitators for a couple's retreat in our area. The couple's retreat was conducted for five consecutive Saturdays. In the middle of this run, they had flu-like symptoms and eventually, they tested positive for COVID. During this time, most people would just bow out of the retreat and just focus on getting healthy and taking care of their whole family. It would have been a valid excuse. But what did this couple do? They didn't stop. They completed the retreat and continued to minister to other people amidst their affliction. You see, this is love. Not looking at yourself, your situation, but instead focus on other people and their needs. Do you want to grow in love? Stop being obsessed with yourself and start taking a genuine interest in other people. Listen more. Don't be a when I person. When I did that, when I went there, when I said this. Sa Tagalog, ikaw yung edi ikaw na. Instead, let's point people to Jesus and how He helped us through different situations. The fourth distinguishing act of love is courtesy. Courtesy shows that we value the other person. Do we still say please and thank you to our husband whenever he drives for us? Do you say I'm sorry to your children whenever you have done anything that hurt them? Do you value other people around you and say thank you even to servers, security guards, and mga kasama sa bahay? Saying these words are not the only way we can show courtesy. We can also show courtesy by withholding words. What are the words that we should not say? If we truly love people, we will not say anything that will highlight their faults. Lines like, Ayan ka na naman. Ay, di ka na talaga nagbago. Don't even label your children also when they are having tantrums. Sasabihin natin, oh, you're such a whiner. When we see a person after the quarantine and she gained weight, wag mo namang sabihin, ang mo! Courtesy is knowing what to say 
and what not to say so we can show others we love them. The next point, love practices restraint. Love is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love will help you to exercise restraint on the frustrations that you feel. It will help you to keep your poise when you are provoked. Love is not easily angered. If you are in a hot spot, smile and just lift your hair. Bad temper is a sure sign of a poisoned soul. Have you ever caught yourself reacting sharply and then said to yourself, why did I do that? If you are burning on a short fuse, it tells that something has gone sour within you. What can you do about that? You need a fresh filling of the love of Christ. But the verse goes on to say that if you truly love, you will keep no record of wrongs. Love is selective in its recall. Love will choose to remember the good about a person rather than to dwell on the wrongs they may have done. In short, if you have genuine love, hindi ka lang magtitimpe, hindi mo rin tatandaan lahat ng mali na nagawa sa'yo. My daughter often experiences this. She has two young children and she confesses that sometimes she feels irritated and easily angered by her children. She shouts at the most simple things na before hindi naman niya kinakagalit. When she assessed herself, she realized na two days na pala siyang hindi nakakapag-quiet time. I'm sure most of you can relate. Whenever we feel annoyed, irritated, short-tempered, we need to rest in God and let His love fill us so we can love others. The next distinguishing act is love is joyful. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth. Love finds no pleasure in other people's failure. What is the habit of your heart in this area? When you hear something that has been passed on, do you instinctively think the best or presume the worst? Love instinctively think the best it gravitates in that direction. Have you ever found yourself jumping to conclusion only to discover that you have completely misjudged a situation? Do you say this? Buti nga sa'yo. You deserve that. Na karma ka din. <laughs> Alan Redpat says, When a man has fallen, love will think about the battle he must have fought and the struggle he must have had before he went down. Love finds no pleasure in other people's failure. In other words, love will always believe the best in people, not presume the worst in them. Are you joyful? Or could it be that a gloomy pessimism has taken root in your soul? A habit of thinking the worst? A glass half empty approach to life? A cynicism that doesn't anticipate much good coming or happening. You need to be renewed in love. It will make a difference in the people around you. A few weeks ago, my grandchildren became feverish and developed cough and cold. After a few days, my daughter called me and said she too had flu-like symptoms. Worse. She said her sense of smell and taste has diminished. My grandson, Siguro, hearing his parents talk about coronavirus, told his mom, Mommy, I'm scared. And my daughter said, Honey, Jesus is with us. Don't be scared. How about we learn a new song? So together, they learned a new song. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. They tested negative for COVID-19. And after a week, they visited Lola and my grandchildren who have memorized the whole song word by word, sang to Lola. Whatever situations you are in, do you know in your heart that God is good? 
Let Him fill your heart with praise so you'll be able to love no matter what. The last distinguishing act of love is love is consistent. Love always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love is consistent and it never gives up. Notice the word always. God is calling us to live like this, not just on Sundays, high days and holidays, but every day, so that love is not an occasional gesture, but your obvious aspect of character. So how do, you, do we apply 1 Corinthians 13? Number one, let's examine ourselves in the light of the scripture. God's words serves as a mirror. It is given to us to see ourselves as we really are, so we can set right what is really wrong. God knows our real score, but our problem is an overrated assumption of ourselves. Examine our love. With whom do I most need to be patient with at this time? Where do I need to be more gracious? Which of my friends am I most likely to envy? Who do I need to listen to better at this time? Most people never change because they don't examine themselves. Number two, yield to the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 13 are the distinguishing acts of love that God wants us to practice. This is the goal. This is the character God wants to mold in us. In Philippians 2 verse 13, For it is God who is at work in you, both to desire and to work for His good pleasure. And in Romans 5, the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. A song said, with every act of love, we bring the kingdom come. So, we can pray this prayer. Lord, increase my patience. Lord, open my hand and make me more gracious and show me how to direct that graciousness. Lord, help me restrain my anger. Lord, deliver me from negative turn of mind. Give me joy in what is good instead of constant complaining or whatever I can find that, that that is bad. When you ask this in prayer, you can be certain that this is the will of God for you. He will do this. So ask with confidence and yield to His leading. Number three, enjoy Jesus' presence in your life and you will abound in love. Jesus modeled to us the seven distinguishing acts of genuine love. Think of his patience, the long suffering of Jesus. Think of his graciousness and kindness in your life. Think about his humility. Think about his courtesy. He gave up his life for you, but will not force his way in you. He gives us the gift of choice and is waiting for you. Think about his restraint. He is slow in anger and abounding in love. Your sins, he said, I will remember no more. Think about his joy. He rejoices over you as you rejoice over him. Think about his consistency. His love for you will never end and will never change. Use this to increase your joy as you discover how much you are loved by Christ. You will discover more and more what it means to love as you enjoy His love. You cannot give what you do not have. We can only love like this if we have received and experienced the love of Jesus. With His love, we can. This song would bring you back to your first love. The title of the song is Because You Love Me. I will read to you the lyrics and uh, ponder this in your heart and think of Jesus' love for you. For all those times you stood by me, for all the truth that you made me see, for all the joy you brought to my life, for all the wrong that you made right, for every dream you made come true, for all the love I find in you, I'll be 
forever thankful, Jesus. You're the one who held me up and never let me fall. You're the one who saw me through, through it all. You were my strength when I was weak. You were my voice when I couldn't speak. You were my eyes when I couldn't see. You saw the best there was in me. Lifted me up when I couldn't reach. You gave me faith because you believe. I'm everything I am because you love me. We can do this acts of love because Jesus loves us.